So today in this video we will compare two models of personality traits and personality types. Those two models are the Big Five and the MBTI. So I wanted to show to you that there are four aspects in which the uh, Big Five could uh, be said to be uh, superior to the MBTI, although I think both uh, instruments are useful, but the Big Five should not be neglected, and I will give you four reasons. So what is the Big Five? The Big Five is the five-factor model that is uh, known by the acronym OCEAN, Openness, Conscientiousness, Extraversion, Agreeableness, and Neuroticism. And this uh, model was developed uh, from the, the 80s on and um, developed uh, progressively and even more in the 90s and in the uh, 2000s. So these four uh, points or these four aspects which uh, might uh, make the Big Five superior in some aspects First, um, the Big Five was developed using the scientific method. That is to say that the MBTI uh, stems from uh, philosophical ideas and not from uh, rigorous observations of people and of a large amount of population uh, by uh, the psychoanalyst Carl Jung during the 20s. The Big Five uses the scientific method instead. It has no uh, assumption on human personalities, no a priori taxonomies, but uh, it actually describes how the personality functions. The Big Five is based on uh, hardcore data to determine the personality organization. It stems from the lexical hypothesis that the culture through language encapsulates us the aspect of personality and from a set of 4,500 words in English showing consistent patterns of thoughts, feelings and behaviors and use the method of people rating themselves or being rated by others and then the statistical techniques of factor analysis to group characteristics together based on how strongly they are related to each other. Thus, the Big Five obtains five major clusters and then from these clusters, so the clusters are openness, conscientiousness, extraversion, agreeableness and neuroticism, one can test theories of how we come to those traits. What's more, it has determined from the 90s on, on subtraits, like for example in conscientiousness, self-discipline, cautiousness or orderliness, or for agreeableness, altruism or cooperation. The second big advantage of the Big Five is it places the personality on continuums, not on categories. The MBTI gives personality types that is a, a discontinuous or discrete categories qualitatively different from the others. The Big Five, on the contrary, is based on personality traits which are placed on a continuum from uh, the first percentile to the 99th percentile, from low to high. For example, one can be uh, very low in anxiousness moderately low, pretty high in anxiousness or very high in this facet. And traits are preferred by psychologists, psychologists to types because it enables one to um, see uh, deeper uh, in each uh, personality and to make uh, new constructs and not to be uh, constrained by already existing concepts or constructs. For example, ISFJ can be described as being quiet, responsible and considerate, 
which are three dimensions of the Big Five, extraversion, conscientiousness, and agreeableness. But the Big Five can see them separately and can see the overlap with other personality. And so what could say that a person uh, could um, be on various uh, personality types. Uh, the um, type approach of the MBTI categorizes people as extreme, whereas the Big Five recognizes that uh, people are on continuum and people are not either extroverts or introverts, but they can be, for example, ambiverts. They are not uh, uh, either thinking type or um, feeling type, but there is a continuum of agreeableness, for example, where we take more or less uh, people into account. Third aspect, uh, the um, Big Five can show you how you've changed across time. Because if you take a questionnaire at many years of difference, your uh, personality might change on different uh, occasions. And you can see this uh, with some tests online. Uh, which uh, give you the evolution of your personality during time. For example, if you are already on the threshold of extroversion to introversion, with age you can cross this um, threshold and become um, like an introvert. So personality traits uh, dimensions capture change much better than types because of this uh, uh, continuum we have said before. And uh, it can be uh, the case not only, obviously, for extraversion, but also, for example, for openness or agreeableness. It has been shown that during time, people become, uh, in general, more agreeable and more conscientious, for example. And fourth, uh, the MBTI, uh, the Big Five, sorry, uh, enables uh, the um, to predict very well some uh, performance and some choices of life. What will happen in your life in terms of education and academic performance, for example, openness and conscientiousness are very uh, correlated with education and academic performance. Performance of job, life satisfaction, for example, uh, extraversion or low neuroticism, relationship satisfaction, divorce, for example, neuroticism, physical health, uh, in uh, connection with conscientiousness and uh, health-related behaviors. So let me sum up four reasons why the uh, Big Five can be more interesting than the MBTI in some aspects. So first, um, it is based on a scientific method and study of large population with a statistical method. Second, uh, it places personality traits on continuums. Third, it enables you to um, see the evolution of your personality during, during time. And fourth, um, it uh, can uh, predict uh, many uh, behaviors and choices of life and success also. So leave me a comment. Thank you.